so this is uh, the first disclaimer is like I'm not a maintainer in Zephyr. So this is just my journey from uh, Linux world into started working with Zephyr and then how do I become a contributor and then, like this is just my view about uh, my contribution side of it. So the actual contribution guidelines and the latest updates please follow the documentation in Zephyr. So that's the first one and the second one is uh, there was a talk from Carlos and uh, Marty Bolivar and uh, earlier this year in Zephyr developer summit on behalf of Nordic. Uh, this is exactly the same topic like say they have done the patches merged get merged in Zephyr. So this is a minor deviation in terms of comparison with Linux apart from that the most part of the presentation is like you feel duplicated most likely but I try to be uh, make it unique somehow. So uh, we Lin in Linux primarily work on embedded Linux uh, and as well as uh, for past two three years in Zephyr Artis as well and our goal is primarily in terms of uh, bringing support for new SOCs, boards, and uh, and deliver solution as build systems and so on. So I myself live in Berlin. So today uh, we speak like uh, this topic is split between like we speak about what we can contribute and what do you need for the contribution and how do you contribute towards Zephyr. So uh, for how do you contribute part like just to differentiate or to make it uh, maybe understandable for the people who new to Zephyr. I tried to do a contribution on the fly with the demo because just I have prepared it for and then also uh, what makes the difference from Linux world and uh, what I felt as a real difference comparing to the uh, Linux kernel contributions and then like you would it's most likely same but we see some uh, key differences between them. Okay, so the prerequisites. So we can speak like many things you might know, like needed to do uh, Zephyr contributions as a first place. Like you may need to know the build system, like build and what makes the difference between CMake to make and uh, you may have the knowledge about kconfig. So they all can contribute your prerequisites, but I don't call them as prerequisites in this particular uh, presentation. So I call git and uh, you know uh, git primarily for one or the other way in version control systems. So that's the prerequisite which I call it myself. So also apart from git, uh, you have to know GitHub to some extent. In a way, you need to have uh, knowledge about adding how to create an issue, how to create a uh, pull request, and how you can contribute towards in, say, in terms of communicating with your actual maintainer reviewer in terms of like, say, um, how, how do you do this in GitHub, So which we can see in a moment. But apart from this, the basics about Git, like you, you must be knowing like how do you want to create a comment, branching uh, strategies, and then like uh, let's say if you wanted to uh, merge one branch to another, you're interested in some features from another developer or maintainer, then like how do you uh, rebase, merge, and uh, play around with it, and let's say you wanted to bring in some new features, which is bleeding edge, but then like it's not in the master yet, so how do you uh, pull those things? So that's what we're gonna see about. And uh, as in the slide says, like you, uh, there is one prime difference in terms of uh, coming from the Linux kernel world and as well as the U-boot world. Like when you contribute to the Linux kernel, the whole patch sets and as well as the review process go by mail. So completely only by plain mail. There is no rich text. Only the plain has uh, plain uh, text email, and then you communicate over the maintainer, and then like you send revisions of patches and revisions of patches, and finally you get it merged. So it's completely email-based system. But wherein like we have the UI and interactive-based systems in GitHub, and specifically uh, the project is completely hosted in GitHub. So uh, the whole system is like based on GitHub, and you you need to know like what are the things of GitHub. Like, but we we touch some basics about uh, GitHub about like how to open it. So before uh, going into what you can contribute as part of the Zephyr Artis, like let's have a brief overview, like not an extensive one, uh, about the directory structure. So what we have in Zephyr Artis altogether, like it's it's just not just the Artis itself, like it, it is distributed across like multiple uh, source control systems, like so, source, sources like uh, as you can see. The first thing is bootloader, wherein like you have um, currently. Zephyr supports one bootloader from the upstream, which is also the same Apache 2.0 license based on like MCU boot bootloader. So that is under bootloader, that's the directory structure, the prime directory structure, under which you have also modules, and which we will speak in the next slide, and the Zephyr Autos itself. So, and then uh, you speak about Zephyr uh, directory structure here, wherein um, if you see the source structure from Linux or U-Boot, you might already be guessing like, okay, so these are exactly same structure. So this is what uh, I felt like happy about. So because I was coming from a, a Linux world and then like I was experimenting different autosses and then like I felt this is more optimal, like more easy for me to move from Zephyr, I mean Linux to Zephyr world. 
So in here, like we have architectural, which is same as uh, uh, Linux, which is like you have the architectural dependent code, which is start initialization, exception handling, uh, core memory handling stuff in there. Like we have architecture support for ARM, RISC-V, MIPS, and so on. So and also we have boards, something similar to U-boot, wherein you have uh, the board definition specifically for that particular board, how do your PCB itself laid out and then all, all your sensor definitions like what are the peripherals which is connected like sensors or um, any high speed uh, peripherals like USB and how it's connected. So you laid out this whole definition into device tree under a board definition. And then we have drivers wherein you have uh, peripheral IP blocks, I squared C, SPI or DMA all sort of IP blocks which is comes as part of SOC and also you have drivers for sensor which is actually added externally to your PCB, not just part of the uh, PCB or SOC uh, blocks itself, we also have drivers for external ICs. So you also have, um, you can also think of about like a shield which you get from the market uh, as an Arduino shield and then you place it on top, you get, an, you get an additional CAN controller which is like maybe from microchip or something. So those part of driver can also be live in the driver, it's not just the driver which is part of the SOC blocks. So and then like we have device tree which is the DTS directory as in so like um, this difference uh, I can say a quick difference between how it's organized in the Linux kernel in the uh, in, and in the Jaffa world like the DTS actually goes to Arc ARM boot or Arc ARM64 uh, and then the respective vendor and then like you see the DTS in Linux kernel respective but then like we have the DTS directory completely independent in Zephyr and uh, laid out in the same way like as in the board or ARM uh, architecture. So we have architecture specific device tree and then you have like uh, SOC specific device tree and then like uh, board and uh, SOC family or all these uh, group of things have been living in the device tree, uh, DTS directory. And then you have the kernel wherein the core part, uh, the scheduler, memory manager and then the implementation about synchronizations, primitives and so on will in there. And also um, before modules we speak about samples and test which is most likely similar like say sample application for a specific case but it doesn't cover all the APIs which is provided by DMA or something but it just covers the basic example of how do you use the DMA or uh, how do you use a specific sensor. But when it comes to test cases it covers most part of the test coverages which is used for the CI system as well. So that's where the test directory and uh, sample directory varies. So there is a couple of other things which is like I can say ARC, board, drivers and SOC, you can think about all of them into a hardware hardware level developments like SOC related hardware, architecture related and then board related. So we have a picture in the next slide and then we can speak about it in detail. And then the subsystem part where you have the TCP IP full blown stack independent for Zephyr and then like complete Bluetooth implementation stack for Zephyr independently and also for the USB and then many other things like OTA management systems and so on like we have multiple other subsystems as well. So uh, the backbone of this whole source tree is like you can think about like say uh, how it's organized bootloaders and then like you have modules under which you have libraries and modules which you can see. So how does it really organized is basically with a tool called West. Um, if you already have them you might know the details how it actually clone multiple dependent modules. Let's say you depend on an uh, external JSON library which you wanted to consume for your application. Then you can include your external JSON library with providing the remote URL and where do you wanted to place, uh, place this particular source code in there. So that's the backbone about West and then how do you clone the source code and the same West tool is actually used for the compilation as well. So it's like West is the ma main tool and it have a subordinate command like where in initialization, update, build, signing utilities and like this is sort of like additional utilities wherein you can uh, make use of it for cloning and compilation and things like that. So you can also your, or add your own uh, utilities together with West like there is a specific talk uh, for West in like couple of years ago if I am not wrong. So this is about the module directory wherein you have uh, the good side uh, which I can say is like modules hall where you have, um, I'm not sure if it's visible, like say um, every vendor, uh, let's say ST, Nordic or uh, uh, specific vendors provides their own hall layer, hardware abstraction layer which provides the IP block and then CPU related initialization and IP, IP block handling. So those lives completely external, this doesn't live into the Zephyr tree. So which makes a lot of sense meaning uh, you can add additional modules uh, the changes to the modules or let's say version upgrade from X to Y for the Nordic SDK or let's say STM32 uh, HAL layer is migrated from one version to another, those can be directly coming in place and the respective changes go to the Zephyr side. So I mean this is completely an external vendor repository maintained completely external in terms of HAL. So you can also think about like uh, libraries which you uh, currently we have like uh, security, there is also another directory called security wherein you know, like crypto you have the security libraries and so on. So this is how the source is organized and 
uh, there is one a couple of key points which I can compare right away with Linux is like uh, it's uh, completely inheriting the kconfig configuration system and also uh, in terms of device tree we have been using the same thing uh, in uh, as in compared to the Linux kernel. So if you wanted to device uh, layer out how your IP blocks is laid out and how your PCB is connected with your peripherals and so on that comes under the uh, configuration uh, sorry device tree part and as well as the kconfig part. Those, those things are completely inherited or you can think about same thing as in Linux kernel. So that is how uh, you can compare, but uh, when it comes to def config in Linux kernel, you have a dedicated def config for your board or uh, let us say uh, with your set of features enabled as part of the kernel. So you can compare them with a specific configuration called project configuration which you build together with application which is an exception, but you club kernels and its dependencies together with your application and provide a configuration called project.config. I mean like when you compile the kernel, uh, you have like a large set of dot config file which is like 5000, 4000 lines with all the configuration enabled, which I am not speaking about that. So, when you before that compilation, you enable a specific dev config. So, that is what we speak about here. That is like uh, project config is something similar to dev config here. And also, we have fragments, um, dev config fragments. Uh, technically, we apply for like in, if you come from a Yocto world or Linux world, you have fragments applied on top of uh, existing config specifically to enable IPv6 or specifically to enable a specific feature for your own hardware. Let us say I have two different hardware, one with uh, de deployment in India and another one deployment in Germany. So, uh, wherein I do not have IPv6 in Germany, but then uh, specific uh, support in India. So, I can enable IPv6 only for Indian uh, customer based on this particular overlay. So, that is how you can make a difference. But uh, for, uh, as far as the build system is compared, the underlying is like make when uh, in, in case of Linux and like previously it was make for Zephyr as well, but it is actually now CMake, more luxury more uh, comfortable in terms of developing, in terms of adding additional support and also uh, the whole system, build system of under West is under like basically CMake, uh, that is the prime difference which I wanted to point, point out there. So, um, so what actually you can contribute, now you know the source view, how exactly it laid out, how are you basic, I mean what are the parts which you can contribute. So, and the image which is on the left side is basically taken from Zephyr documentation. So, I tried showing up on a quick example about how, uh, what are the pieces which you can contribute on part of or default on, on behalf of the hardware support. Let us say uh, you have a hardware, uh, complete PCB assembled, ready to use. So, what it based out of like you can think about bottom up approach wherein it could be based out of uh, ARM architecture or a, a RISC-V or MIPS architecture, but then we have been uh, this part of implementation goes to the architecture dependent part like as I said in the driver uh, in, in the initial slide course view uh, Zephyr um, arc you have a respective architecture and it is in uh, implementation let us say initialization sequences or start dot s and uh, let us say memory handling and so on. So, those part lives in the uh, respective area of the particular architecture. So, then based on every, every architecture there is an IP which is provided uh, like IP block provided by the respective company let us say ARM corporation itself. So, they provide ARM M33 or uh, let us say M4, M0 and respective and then like the companies which is going to use as a vendor uh, get this IP block from them and then produce an SOC and then like they could uh, lay out a different family. For example, in case of NRF we have NRF uh, family which is NRF 52 as a different one another one is NRF 91. Whereas like STM we have a different families like L0 through F4, H7 and so on. So, that is again getting the IP block from the actual producer of the IP and then they, they use a vend, uh, SOC like the SOC meaning not just the uh, uh, architecture itself, they lay out all the peripheral IP blocks they on their own, they get the IP probably they get the IP, uh, IP block from a different company. For example, can be can can be obtained from Bosch. So, similarly they, they, they have their own IP blocks clubbed together to form the SOC and then like uh, they have the SOC series and respective SOC family, I mean like uh, sorry SOC itself meaning. Um, NRF 9160 is the current one like probably you will have maybe in the up upcoming life like say 9161 or uh, we have NRF 52840 and then like 802805 or something like that. So, that is the previous family. So, that is like that is a set of SOCs on top of a specific series. So, this is how it laid out and then based on that particular SOC you create a custom hardware uh, and you lay out let of set of peripherals like sensors or um, let us say phys, uh, industrial interfaces like uh, RS232, 485 and so on. So, then you create a hardware something like uh, a development kit and then a completely custom PCB for your customer or something like that. So, um, the same way the, uh, the 
hardware architecture is laid out in here, you, you, you can add support for similar things. Like when you have a custom PCB with support, you can add the, uh, your support in board. And then like when you have a completely new SOC, which is not supported in Zephyr, then you have to add a support in, um, uh, add a support in SOC directory respectively. But then like if you don't have the SOC series at all, uh, let's say um, Infineon and Trico. So then like it's completely unavailable at this point of time. Then like you can add this particular support in SOC series and SOC family respectively. And it's actually completely a new architecture called Trico. It's not ARM. So you can then add an uh, architecture called Trico. So that's how you lay out uh, as, as in the hardware support is concerned. So when you, when you come back to the slide here, uh, architecture, board, drivers, and then like you have the SOC directory. So those part is covering back to this particular slide, like laid out in the bottom up approach. So that's about the hardware support, SOC support. And then there is one thing which I haven't covered here, like you probably have uh, external sealed or sensors that is also comes under the drivers, but I haven't uh, mentioned this. So those you, you can add like an I2C accelerometer can be added. And then like you have to place this into driver sensor and then respective sensor driver, then something like that. So uh, that's what we spoke about. But when we wanted to add a specific uh, SOC uh, or, or a new company's SOC, and uh, you have an ARM SOC, but then like it's completely not in uh, Zephyr tree, then you can add a new hall layer. That's the hardware abstraction layer if you wanted to. Because if the vendor provides a hall layer, you can do the whole hall layer as an external addition and then consume it. And then like if it is not, if you wanted to add completely in tree support as like Linux kernel, that is also okay. I think. Uh, one quick example would be Nuoton, if I'm not wrong. They have the complete implementation of all the IP blocks within Zephyr without any hard layer support in there. So apart from which, the, you can also add support for software in terms of core components, uh, subsystem components. Like for example, we have uh, implementation for DHCP v4, but then we don't have support for DHCP v6. Probably you can uh, have uh, like the uh, duplicate address detection and all the other mechanisms on behalf of DSCP v6. So probably if you are interested and then like you add support for DSCP v6 in your network and then you can contribute back to those areas as well. So and other things like uh, samples, test cases, documentations and tooling so, and adding an external library probably you are interested in like say another uh, libc like we currently use a minimalistic libc by default and then like new lib as part of this tool chain if you wanted to enable them and if you wanted to add there is another libc called pico libc and then, like if you wanted to have another implementation of libc itself then you can go with adding them into modules lib and then consume them into this effort tree so now <laughs> um, we spoke about uh, uh, how the source tree is laid out and what you can contribute as part of uh, the whole source tree uh, before going into the whole um, pictorial representation of this particular workflow, I would like to show a quick example of how to contribute. Let me try to bring in here. Not sure if it's going to work. Okay. Okay, it's dark mode. I'm not sure if it's visible, but still. So um, basically, Zephyr Autos, as I said, is hosted in uh, GitHub. And you can have the uh, you can see the project repository here. And if you go one step up further, you can see all the repositories. Let's say um, the hall layers and uh, Zephyr tree itself, and all the toolchain bootloader, and all the dependencies which we discussed so far. So the that's where it lives. So the first step in doing your contribution is like forking your repository. Let's say uh, you wanted to f you have to fork this uh, version. And then like you can place in your own way, like say in your private repository or if you're, if you're a company and then you wanted to contribute together with your uh, colleagues, then like you have to place, you can place them into your company or something like that. So for now, I'm going to assume like I'm going to place in this particular repo and okay. So and then like coming back to here. So I have a clean cloned version of a uh, Zephyr here. So for specifically for this one. So <clears throat> for checking what I can contribute, I already checked a specific driver with a um, minor modification, not a major one, like just to show it. So uh, check patch is the same thing from Linux uh, as well. Like you, you check uh, for the code alignment, styling, um, sign off check, and all the basic checks. So uh, when I check the whole, uh, let's say, all the sensor drivers, you say like a lot of, you can find like X number of warnings, like 
um, GitHub Actions already check for them in newer PRs and things like that. Probably this is a driver which is not checked for quite some time in the main line. So I figure out, okay, so this is a driver which I can contribute now. So with a specific exception like the indentation is wrong. So I wanted to fix that and quickly show how you can fix it. Say I go to specific line number 32 and I say this is a space like it's, it, it must be a tab whenever it's possible. So I change this tab, I mean space into uh, tabs. Oh, that's it. Like that's a change you can make and contribute back. So just a second. Oh. And then get diff, you know what you have made, a made as a change. So now you can, ma you can make this change into a, a contribution uh, back in here. So for now I have a branch which is basically based on, um, sorry, the git remote uh, from Zephyr project. So I have a forked version which I will add into my own remote. Let's say okay and then I fetch for that branch uh, remote. Okay, let's see if it works. I'm not sure. Okay, it works. Now I have this change here but I wanted to create a branch because you cannot push changes into a main branch. So it is merged back into main branch after um, you merge this PR into this where. So then like you check out a new branch or create a new branch called let's say fix uh, check patch DHT or something like that. And then you have your changes here. Then I say, okay, I, now I have made the changes. I wanted to commit it back. So what I can commit, uh, I mean like this is a commit message probably people coming from uh, Git world can do. Say, uh, if you are a first time contributor, you must be cautious in terms of typing this like say, uh, what is your commit message? Like the first liner and then like the message itself, like what, what it really does. You, you cannot be doing like, okay, I'm happy to contribute. No, that's not technically allowed. So you can, uh, let's say, oh, sorry. Um, let's say sensor, that's the subsystem system or driver which I have it, DST fix code styling and then you say fix code indentation. Sorry? You didn't run check patch after you modified. Yeah, but like I haven't committed it yet. So I will do a commit, let's say I cre created the commit now, let's say Reps, check page, that's a good point, thank you. And then let's say git, which commit, that's a head, basically, I check for it now. So technically, um, okay, so now I have this branch and you can also do git format. Or let's say file, I'm not sure if it's There is a couple of other issues as well. Like let's for now ignore them. So like I fixed this particular uh, changes and then I have a branch ch changes in, in my branch. So I push this branch. Okay, so now it's automatically pops in a way that like I can go ahead and open a PR but even if you don't, if you don't see such link, you can come to here and then select the respective uh, forked version, and then you can go ahead and create this PR. So once you click the PR, I mean, let's say uh, there are what other options you have. Like when you have a large set of changes, something like you wanted to create a new uh, feature or a new subsystem or new RFC related things, it makes a lot of sense. Also, you can create add up a tag called RFC in here in in in, in top of your title, or you can create a draft. And then like you can discuss with the maintainers and developers and like, okay, align with them before going into the final merge of the main branch. So a um, couple of things here uh, as a single liner. So like here, when I say summary, 
uh, you can cross compare this with your git send email like say when you send a large set of patch series like say 15 or 20 patch series for your last set of things uh, in terms of linux you, you say hyphen hyphen summary and give a notes say okay this is what the feature does and this is what i observed and this is what implemented this is why i implemented so you don't need to like say explain what in a detail because that's a code says like but then you have to say why you have done this way like why you have chosen this particular approach instead of maybe a different approach let's say a buffer or something like that so those part can be explained uh, in hyphen hyphen summary when it comes to git send email but similarly you can do the same thing in this particular text and then like click create pull request but i'm not going to create it immediately now so but then like back into our flow of slides so i forked it cloned it or i just uh, added the remote created a new branch added a set of commits which i uh, imagine like okay this is all the changes which i allow to do it so added a set of commits now i created the pr now it goes to the discussion as you can already see here uh, the respective maintainer is already assigned by the zephyr bot and probably you if you wanted to add people which you already discussed about this particular feature and you can speak about speaking with a uh, respective maintainer like uh, respective subsystems and then like you can speak about them so you can think about like say there is a script Yeah, get maintainer spear. So if you run this particular script, you can uh, know who is the maintainer and then like the email address of it. So it's the same thing which is coming from the Linux world as well. There's an amount of contribution, depends on the amount of contribution and things like that. So then you speak with the maintainer, merge, the, merge align, resolve the conversation and things like that. So that's the whole flow I can, as I can say, but like I'm gonna repeat, the, uh, repeat things quickly uh, as possible here before the time runs out. So we have, <coughs> Uh, one thing in common uh, everywhere like you must do only one thing let's say uh, in that particular patch which i created if i wanted to add a new set of a variable to a structure like you can get a new sensor value from a um, sensor and then like do processing that's completely not not related to what you do as a fixed alignment thing so you must do only one thing in a specific commit and that particular commit should be compilable and testable uh, in a way like say I do a test uh, as an independent developer, I do testing and development for a different purpose. And then like when your commit comes into your place, then like I feel something is broken in my hardware, but it is not broken in your end. So even though we are used the same hardware, same SOC, same BCB whatsoever, but I wanted to figure out what exactly going on. Like I use Git Pisac most likely for figuring out like, let's say 3.0 version of the Zephyr works for me, but then 3.1 breaks. So then like I use bit, Git Pisac between them and figure out which one is done. So when Git Pisac goes in there, I will compile each and every branch so yeah, i mean every commit sorry so in that it makes uh, painful when your commit breaks the compilation system so you have to make sure that every commit of yours is compilable and testable so there is also good commit and bad commit message as i said before you have to explain at least a minimalistic sentence let's say subsystem what you have done uh, what what exactly this does so i'm like why you done this way so specifically to speak about okay this is a good commit and so you cannot just say like fixed code styling and push this commit so the developer or the maintainer doesn't have any clue what you have fixed then you have to explain the based on the explanation then you have you can know that like okay that's how it works okay so that's about good commit and bad commit i mean like people coming from the linux world probably already know about it so <clears throat> and this uh branches which were created so you the commits in this branch uh, needs to be linear or relevant let's say uh, the same terminology used in the other presentation let's say linear linear meaning you cannot have a mergeable branch and you can add merge commits on top of it that won't work in zephyr basically uh, in a way you need your change set in your branch should be clean and it should be rebased to the current main branch so when the maintainer accepts this and merges this back into the actual main branch there shouldn't be any uh, let's say additional merge commits which you bring in from a different branch or something like that so your change set should be clean in a way that like linear only your commits should be there the, such a way <coughs> that's what i mentioned about and as i said mentioned about like reviewers will be auto assigned you can discuss with uh, people in discord and okay respect you can ask for reviews and <coughs> yeah this is one minor exceptions compared to the a few minor exceptions compared to the code styling uh, when it comes to writing it so you need uh, uh, probably you need like uh, i mean the the main exception here is like you have braces in every block uh, i mean okay that's how it is so if else and every block even if it's a single liner you need the block statements so apart from which it's most exactly same as like 
uh, the Linux kernel coding guidelines. So if you come from there, you already are like okay with what what is going on with the code styling process. So whenever you wanted to add a new external SOC and then like you wanted to add the hall layer for that one, so you might be you must be considering with compatibility uh, for this particular um, addition. Say if I wanted to bring in a new JSON C implementation, for example, let's say I wanted to use JSON C as a library, libjsonc, C, uh, because I I don't feel the implementation in JSON uh, JSON library in, within the Zephyr is not uh, good enough for my usage in application development. So I bring in JSON C, but then I, it is nowhere uh, possible to contribute it back into Zephyr because like that is completely GPL v3, which is com completely polluting the license. You have to check for the license compatibility with Apache 2.0, and it's the community for the external hall layers. You have to speak with the maintainers and then like align with them. You can already get it set the check the documentation and compatibility to figure out what can be contributed or what cannot be contributed. Probably you may need to reinvent something, something like Modbus, wherein like uh, it is from a different stack. But even though libmodbus is available, which is completely a different uh, license like GPL v3, we have a dedicated implementation for Modbus. So something like this. So as we saw, like you you have to run like check patch, styling, CLang formats, and okay, so you you have to run these checks during your compilation before co pushing into your contribution but also the github actions does all these operations and give you an error saying okay you missed this so probably you gave a sign off but it is not a full name or uh, you missed certain uh, criteria in in terms of your patches so those part will be covered by git actions as well it makes a lot of sense you can run them into your local branch before even pushing them to the main branch or you before even opening the pr so and Basically, for the review process, um, the, as in any open source, you must be super patient. So that's the only rule. Okay? You cannot like go and let's say uh, ping, 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 ping every day and ask for the review or ask for the merge. That doesn't make sense because the maintainers will be busy. They have their own job. They have their own uh, activities going on, and they've been dealing with n number of other PRs, MRs, and so on. Like you cannot ping them every. What makes perfect sense, I would say from Linux world, you can copy the same thing. Like you can ping every two weeks, maybe 15 days or 20 days. Then like if there is no response, like say uh, no uh, review response, there is no activities ongoing particular PR, then you can you probably you can make sense to 15, 20 days is uh, perfect sense in my opinion. So that's the thing about uh, getting the review process. So that's the patience part. And then like in terms of uh, getting your patches merged, you get the acknowledgement, let's say from the maintainer or so, um, basically, uh, in in kernel, you you say ACK uh, signed off by by the maintainer. Whereas in in GitHub, you say approved. Then it's okay. It makes like if your changes are like uh, in architectural level, SOC level, then it makes sense to have wait for like three or four acknowledgements. Then it is if it is minor, something like this uh, fixed styling, it makes sense to get two approval. Then it can be merged into the main uh, main branch. So this is one uh, difference which I felt as well. So Zephyr, wherein the developer you develop something, push into the maintainer, and then the maintainer set of maintainers will review it. And then once all good, approved, then you can go into the main branch. Where in the Linux or U-boot world, you have a chain of maintainers. Let's say developers gives to the maintainer, then gives to another maintainers next tree, um, and then finally land into Linux next tree. So that's how like it's a chain of uh, approvals or chain of branches it will be gaining, going into that. It's not like IIO branches directly going into Linux tree. It's basically go into Greg tree and then like goes into uh, Linux tree. So that's a hierarchy difference in terms of merging the final thing. So maybe if uh, likely we may run out into time. So you can check in this release cycle uh, when you wanted to develop a product or software product or hardware product in terms of uh, using Zephyr for their product. So you have uh, release cycles and then RC uh, for uh, features, uh, feature freeze and so on. And also we have LTSs, uh, LTS release in, in Zephyr. So it will be for like 1.7 was the previous release LTS. Now it's 2.7. You can use them for long-term support in your product. And then like you can migrate from 1.7, 2.7, and another LTS uh, going on further. So this, I think we spoke a uh, little detail. But um, OK, so speaking this in detail, might I might run out of time before speaking uh, the most important differences here. So um, if you need improvements, need help, then the, it makes sense to create issues here in GitHub. And then like you have to provide, when, when you say bug report, let's say you have a segmentation fault or something, it makes sense to file all the log information and then you can um, file a bug report and then like you can ask uh, the respective developer. 
for reviewing those things. So also if you wanted a new feature, completely independent stuff, you wanted a new architecture support, you can discuss them. So you can add these things and keep it active in a way like uh, you can figure out um, in, in your particular development. So you need more help, then probably you can discuss with, let's say, in the Discord. Uh, that's a prime activity, which is, I mean, prime discussion forum, which is ongoing. But if you have a specific discussion, we can also have GitHub discussions. There is also mailing list, or uh, yeah, you can, you, yeah, of course, you can open issues and discuss about the uh, details and issues as well. So this is one uh, general difference which we already discussed in the previous slides when comparing with the Linux world. So there is one key factor which I want to say apart from all the remaining parts you already know it. So the in Linux kernel world when you push it out let's say for 20 commits or 15 commits based on a large set of changes so there which is based out of different maintainers in a different subsystem and then like your commit will be merged by Rob for DTS binding and then like device tree changes and so on but the actual IP block of the driver may not be merged by them. So that is possible. Let's say you have the changes of your DTS binding in Linux kernel 519, and then but the driver is actually going to be merged in 6.0 or 6.1. So that is possible. That's a partial merging part, but that is not possible in my opinion in terms of the GitHub uh, PR, wherein you have to let's say pull everything together, merge everything together. So apart from this, like you already see what is the difference. So uh, you, you you make sense to contribute. Uh, you have uh, minor changes, large set of changes and uh, you have a custom PCB based on your customers and then it makes sense to contribute back to Z uh, Zephyr mainline community even though if it's not an open source hardware or even though if it's not like a publicly community available hardware because when you migrate from one version of Zephyr uh, let's say 2.7 to 3.2 or something like that bumping a release would be super painful otherwise if the if the board itself is not in the main line so you have to be keep maintaining them in your local if you keep those changes as an external board repository or driver repository so convince you can convince uh, with a various points with your customer as well as your uh, reporting manager or so it makes a lot of sense to contribute back to Zephyr in a way so as I mentioned about like say uh, the presentation by Carlos and Marty and then like you can also find uh, presentations in Zephyr Developer Summit about Twister and other important things like major things. Also the link which points to the contribution guideline of Zephyr itself. I think that's mostly it from my end and I'm not sure how many minutes me left, maybe three uh, for questions. Yeah. Yep, sure. Um, basically, we rebase and remodify the commits. Let's say if you have a architectural change and SOC change within the same commit, which makes no sense, and like uh, just an example, and then the maintainer would say split this into architectural specific and SOC specific, and then try to break it down. Then you split the commits, squash it, and rebase it. Yeah. So basically how this works is like say if you have a bug in 2.7 LTS release that's a long term release for example and then like you have uh, uh, the main branch and if you find this bug both in the main and as well as 2.7 uh, you fix this actual problem in main branch and backport this thing back to let's say uh, you need this feature for, feature for LTS tag this for LTS release and then backport this back to 2.7. So assume your change uh, bug is already gone and fixed in a specific commit in the main branch and it's not tagged for backport uh, specifically for this particular LTS then you can ask the maintainer on tag this particular commit for LTS and then it will be backported to 2.7 like sorry 1.7 oh, 
I'm wrong. So on 2.7. So let's say we have the release like 2.7.10, and then it will be released for 2.7.11. Then like backport patches, like vulnerabilities and other fixes. Yeah, I totally get it. But uh, the point about bugs or fixes is, let's say, you're not asking for a completely new feature like um, memory management changes in architecture. Of course not, right? So you have a vulnerability, or you have a minor patch fixing, or let's say uh, there is an exception in your segmentation or null pointer dereferencing, which is missed in a specific uh, branch, let's say LTS, but it is fixed in the latest. That's That would ideally be a smaller changes, yeah. Sure, thank you. <laughs> Sorry about that, like the time's up. And uh, thank you so much for joining today. And I will be around for questions if you have as well. Thank you. <laughs>